FBI Special Agent Sean Archer and his son Michael are on a father-son date riding a carousel. On a hill overlooking the carousel is a sniper named Castor Troy, setting up his rifle to assassinate the FBI agent. The man is an internationally wanted terrorist, responsible for hundreds of deaths and acts of violence. He waits some seconds to get a clean shot before firing. Archer is hit in the back and falls off the ride alongside his son. The bullet seems to have gone through his body and struck the innocent child in the head. With tears in his eyes, the devastated father crawls to his son, while even Castor is stunned that he just killed a kid. The scene cuts to six years later. Archer has been mourning his son's death and looking for Castor for the past six years. His madness to catch his son's killer has affected his life in many ways. Currently, he has annoyed at his fellow agents for failing to retrieve information on Castor's latest missions. Somewhere else, Castor is posing as a minister to sneak into the Los Angeles Convention Center. He hides in the back to assemble an explosive called Sinclair. Meanwhile, at the FBI office, Archer is informed that Castor's brother Paulu has just chartered a jet at a local airfield. Knowing that Paulu always flies with his brother, Archer immediately orders an undercover agent to be planted on the plane. At the same time, his wife calls him, but Archer ignores it, driven by his stubborn wish to put his work above all. Paulu is at a local airfield with his close friends, Leo and Lars. After waiting impatiently for a while, they are relieved when Castor arrives. The brothers then board the plane and are greeted by Winters, an undercover agent. She does her job and informs the police, confirming that the terrorist is on board. Soon after, multiple police cars and a helicopter helicopter approach the runway. Castor isn't surprised to see Archer and his fellow agent Tito chasing the airplane to stop the terrorist from retaliating. Winters points her gun at Castor, but is in turn attacked and knocked out by Poyu. An angered Castor kills Winters in front of his rival, mocking him in the process. In return, Archer jumps into the helicopter and rams it into the airplane. Castor sees things going down and kills the pilot to take control of the plane himself. Still, takeoff is impossible, so the brothers resort to firing at the police openly. In the following brawl, Poyu is captured, but Castor ignores his brother's pleas and runs to save his own life. He then hides in a nearby bunker while the police split up to look for him. A while later, he comes face to face with his biggest enemy, giving rise to another shootout. Castor tries mocking him, but is in turn kicked into the backdraft of a turbine. He flies backwards, falling unconscious from the impact, and is assumed dead. In the following scene, Archer returns home to his wife Eve and daughter Jamie. Their family is far from ideal because Archer has been too busy at work to be there for them. He can deal with international terrorists, but when it comes to his goth daughter, he's a lost cause. The next day, Archer is presented with Paulu's disc, which contains information about their next mission. An animated woman comes up on the screen, saying how she is going to blow everyone away. On looking at the schematics of Sinclair, Archer registers that it is a biological weapon, one that will end much of LA, killing thousands. The only way to get more info on the explosive is through Paulu, but he would only talk to his dead brother. While thinking of a way to get him to talk, Archer's colleague Miller takes him to a private medical institution. There, Archer is met with a massive surprise as he sees Castor in a medically induced coma on life support. Miller puts out her cigarette on Castor's skin, proving that he is fully captured. She and the Institute's director, Dr. Walsh, want Archer to take Castor's face and voice, then go into Erewhon Prison to extract information from Palu. The surgery will be difficult, but 100% effective. These guys would be a hit in Florida. The doctor explains that the surgery is not entirely permanent. Archer's height is easy to correct. His skin and eye color are also close enough to Castor's to be a reasonable match. Laser shears will help make his hair more like Castor's, and an abdominoplasty will be done to rebuild Archer's body to resemble the terrorist. Receding hairline, bad. Abs, good. The most important device for the procedure is a morphinogetic template that has an exterior resembling Castor's face. Archer finds the plan nonsensical and starts to leave while Miller tries to convince him otherwise. At last, he decides to try interrogating known associates of Castor's before eventually going forward with the plan. In the following scene, Archer is seen torturing Castor's associates until they are on the brink of death, but still they do not talk. He also meets up with Castor's girlfriend, Sasha, but she hasn't met him for two years. Even her brother, Dietrich, who works as Castor's supplier, is interrogated to no avail. Archer decides to go through with the surgery, but wants to talk to director Lazaro and his wife before he makes a decision. However, he is not allowed to do so because the mission is classified and off the books, which means that no one else other than Archer and the two are allowed to know of it until it is completed.
needed. Archer gives it a thought, realizes there are literally no good reasons to agree, and agrees. Then, we see him wishing farewell to his family before going in for the surgery. Caster's face is put on top of Archer's exposed muscles and connected, which ends the final procedure of the surgery. A few days later, Caster is on a hospital bed with his head completely wrapped. Meanwhile, Archer's bandages are unwrapped, and he sees himself as the person he hates the most. Initially, he panics, yelling fuck you at everybody, and showing a deep hatred for himself because of his face. But Tito and Miller calm him down quickly. They soon place a microchip in Archer's larynx, which changes his voice entirely. He has six days until the bomb goes off to get information from Poyu. Then, Archer is let into Erewhon Prison, where he gets two days to get Poyu to talk. The prison warden, Walton, welcomes him in, calling him the property of the prison. His feet are then clamped tight in magnetic boots, which allows the guards to monitor his location and also look like they'd be helpful on the moon. After being let into the cafeteria, Archer turns around to talk to Poyu when another inmate named Ivan attacks him. He wants revenge on Castor, ever since he slept with his wife and sister at the same time. Sex sandwiches are Nick Cage's favorite food. At the end of the fight, Archer's magnetic boots are clamped to the EM field, and the warden holds him back with a gun. Meanwhile, at the Walsh Institute, the real Castor's heart rate begins accelerating. He miraculously stands upright, and even more miraculously isn't tied down, and soon realizes that his face muscles are exposed in their gross entirety. The excruciating pain soon hits him, but he still manages to call Lars and Leo for help. The duo comes to his aid in an instant and sets him free, using Dr. Walsh as bait. By now, Castor has watched an entire documentary video on the surgery and knows that it can be reversed. Back in the prison, Archer gains Poyu's trust and successfully manages to extract information about the bomb. He is eager to talk to his associates, but to his surprise, the next person to visit him is Castor himself. He is wearing Archer's face, having threatened the doctor to perform the surgery. The plan has backfired and turned into a huge disaster, mostly because the mission is off the records and if a select number of people die, Archer could lose his identity forever. Also, those people did die. Castor reveals that he has killed Dr. Walter and destroyed any evidence that could be used to prove who he is. An enraged Archer attacks him before the guards rush in to stop him. In the following scene, Castor meets Eve. They talk for a while before she leaves for work as he stares at her ass. Then, he settles into Archer's home and reads Eve's diary, finding out that she and Archer haven't made love in two months. He also discovers Jamie smoking in her room and asks for her hidden stash. Jamie calls him out for his strange behavior before he leaves. Castor makes a deal with his own brother and gets him out of jail as a ruse. When alone without any cameras on them, he reveals his true identity and tells his brother to reveal everything he knows to the police. The explosion is less important to Castor than making Archer's life hell, so he chooses to be named a hero for revealing where the explosive is kept. As he had planned, he and a bomb squad rush to the convention center. However, the explosive is protected by a pin, which will take hours to bypass. In a dramatic climax, Castor goes in instead of the bomb squad for some reason and pulls the correct pin, stopping the explosion at the last second. He is praised by the media and the news soon reaches Archer. He feels suffocated, unable to do anything to save his family and reputation. In a desperate attempt to flee, he decides to break out of prison. He finds out that he can get his boots taken off if he is given shock treatment. He starts a fight with a guard and is taken to the clinic in the back. On his way, he meets Ivan and gets him on his side by claiming he didn't sleep with anyone from his family. Ivan helps Archer by attacking the guards and telling him to run. An epic shootout ensues, causing Ivan to kill the guards in the control room. Archer sits down at the computer and overloads the security system. Just when they think they have won, the warden kills Ivan. He wants to do the same to Castor, but is surrounded by other inmates who beat him to de death. Archer thinks he's made good on his escape before he realizes that the prison is an oil plant platform in the ocean. Before he can think of a way out, a helicopter appears, making him jump off the platform into the ocean. After about 20 shots of him falling, he doesn't surface, and the police assume that he is dead. Castor is told about the incident, but he registers that Archer is probably alive and looking for him. In the next scene, we see Archer ending up at the shore. He calls Eve, but she doesn't recognize him. He gives it a thought before deciding to drive to the penthouse, where Castor's explosive supplier Dietrich lives. He is welcomed to a a lively party of young people who think that he is their companion. <laughs> 
somewhere else, Caster sees Jamie's boyfriend dropping her off in front of the house. The dipshit boyfriend, looking like a member of Sum 41, tries to force himself on her right in her own driveway, which predictably angers Caster. He beats him up before sending him away and having a long conversation with Jamie. She trusts this terrorist wearing her father's face more than she trusts her father himself. Caster sees that she hasn't gotten over her brother's death yet and blames her father for everything. He hands her a knife, teaching her how to use it in case she is ever attacked. Back at Dietrich's penthouse, Archer wakes up Caster's girlfriend Sasha, making advances at him. He freaks out and tries to send her away, all while Poyu watches them from a roof across the street. He calls Caster to tell him about the incident. Meanwhile, Archer finds out that Sasha and Caster have a son named Adam, who Caster never acknowledged. She is just a poor girl trying to make a living for her child so that he can avoid a criminal life. Archer sees his own son in Adam and hugs him, accidentally blurting his real son's name out in the process. Unknowing Archer's whereabouts, Caster sends an FBI SWAT team to the penthouse. They fire a grenade launcher, starting a shootout between the two parties. Archer's priority is to save Sasha and Adam, so he makes the kid wear a headset, muffling the noise of the gunshots. The shootout continues, resulting in several losses of life from both parties. A while later, Archer, Sasha, Adam, and Dietrich find each other. Caster discovers them and aims his gun at Archer. His girlfriend, son, and friend do not recognize him with his face, but he doesn't seem to care at all. He fires at Sasha when she tries to move, but Dietrich takes the bullet and dies. Archer sees Caster running and follows him while firing several rounds at him. They stop for a second when Archer offers to exchange faces again but Caster refuses. They look at themselves in the mirror and then fire through it at each other, and there's tons of symbolism. Archer is the first to be hit by a bullet. The two continue to exchange fire until an FBI agent named Loomis arrives. He makes Archer run up the stairway and sends Caster diving for cover. Poyu and Archer face each other on the roof and prepare to fight. In the end, Poyu falls down and dies. Poor Poyu, I never even knew how to pronounce your name. Caster sees his brother's dead body and breaks into tears. He loses his cool and shoots Loomis in the face. The next morning, Caster returns to his office, depressed by his brother's death. The director, Lazaro, comes in to critique him for causing many unnecessary deaths yesterday. Not caring about the cover anymore, Caster tells Lazaro his true identity, then knocks him to the ground. He also punches him in the heart and stops it, pretending that he just suffered a fatal heart attack. At the same time, Archer breaks into his own house and meets Eve. He calms her down before telling her everything that happened to him in the past month. Eve does not believe him, but he asks her to check Castor's blood type, which is different from his. At night, Eve draws some of Castor's blood and drives over to the hospital. She soon comes face to face with the truth when the blood results match what Archer told her earlier. Just then, Archer comes into the room. Eve draws a revolver on him, but once he tells her the story of how they had their first kiss, she realizes realizes the truth. Suddenly, Castor arrives with Leo and Lars, looking for Archer. Having found out that Eve knows the truth, Eve quickly pretends to be attending to a burn patient and makes up a story about being on call for the night. Castor accepts her story and sends his men away. But once alone, we find out that he knows Eve is lying. The next day, Sasha and Archer go to Lazaro's funeral, where Castor is holding Eve and Jamie hostage. Sasha hands Archer a gun, asking him to avenge her brother's death. A gunfight ensues, and all of Castor's minions are killed, including Sasha. But don't worry, no doves were harmed in the making of this scene. Caster and Archer engage in a battle when Jamie finds a gun and shoots at Archer, believing him to be the real Caster. She soon realizes her mistake when Caster takes her as his hostage and licks her face. <laughs> Game of Thrones did not invent incest after all. He then makes his escape and ends up on a boat while being followed by Archer. After a lengthy chase, which is one of the craziest, most expensive scenes I've ever seen in a movie and you should see it too, both Archer and Caster's boats are destroyed. In a final showdown, Archer hits up a famous moment of cage rage and then kills Caster with a harpoon. With his dying breath, the terrorist destroys his own face to prevent Archer from reclaiming it. When everything calms down, Eve explains the situation situation to the FBI and convinces them of Archer's true identity. Archer goes through surgery and his face is restored. He also has the bullet wound from the beginning finally removed because this doctor is a miracle worker, having finally moved on from the death of his son. In the final scene, Archer brings Sasha's son Adam into the family without asking his wife if she's okay with it, and they raise him as their own. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.